Well, we will turn our attention now to uh, Module 30, 37. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, experienced emotions. And uh, Carol Eisert in 1990, 1977, I'm sorry, isolated 10 basic emotions. Uh, she identified joy, uh, interest, excitement, surprise, sadness, anger, disgust, contempt, fear, shame, and guilt. And most were present in infancy. And I would dare you to try to think if you've ever seen these in, uh, in, in an infant. Um, I think for sure uh, the, the faces that are shown down below in, on the first page of uh, 490, or on 492, the first page of this module, gives you a little bit of an idea of how that goes. Now, we're just going to look at two specific ones, um, anger uh, and happiness specifically. And the, the interesting thing about uh, when we talk about these two is that I would say that easily uh, the, the topic that I spend the most, have spent the most time over the years of my career has really been in, in, uh, revolved around anger or anger management. Um, and when we talk about anger itself, people all often say, well, how, in, how do you actually define it? And essentially, uh, it is aroused by frustrating or insulting acts. So uh, frustration um, or being insulted. But it doesn't stop just there. Usually it's, it is fueled by um, intent uh, that we perceive on the part of the other person. The intent uh, that seems willful, uh, unjustified, and unavoidable. Um, so it may be that expressing our anger may, be, may calm us, but uh, we can't assume too quickly that uh, the uh, the expression of anger will just vent it. That seems to be a false assumption oftentimes in, uh, certainly in counseling circles. We talk about that in terms of uh, catharsis. And the assumption is there is that once expressed, it will alleviate one of the uh, emotions that go with it, but that's not necessarily the case. So. The intent, um, let me write this down so that uh, you have it in front of you. Willful, uh, unjustified, unjust is how I'll put it here, and then unavoidable are all characteristics that usually lead to what we refer to as anger. Uh, so specifically, um, some basic emotions, and, and I want to try to differentiate these a little bit for you in terms of what this uh, uh, diagram has for you. But uh, Eisert's investigations identified the 10 emotions, which I've already mentioned, um, and some have add, uh, added some additional ones. One, one is pride, for example, uh, which actually agrees with um, the, the things that we see in even in scripture, if you want to look at it from that perspective, as far as how pride works. But uh, when psychologists have asked people to report their experiences of different emotions, all seem to place emotions along two dimensions. Um, one we would refer to as valence, and uh, valence is direction, if you will, but it's uh, pleasant versus unpleasant uh, or positive versus negative. So pleasant versus unpleasant, uh, positive versus negative. And that's one dimension that runs along, uh, along this particular axis here that runs up and down this way. The second axis runs is a matter of arousal. Um, and that's, uh, so this one, I can't write sideways. So valence is one. And then the other one is arousal. So low arousal versus high arousal. Uh, let me make sure that I write this here as well. So arousal. Uh, when you think about it, then most of our our um, uh, most of our emotions then 
fall along these dimensions and split out in the four different quadrants, which would basically include this high arousal and negative emotions. Uh, it would include fear and anger over on this side. Um, in the pleasant, positive, and high arousal, we would put elation, uh, like a sense of relief, and uh, enthusiasm or excitement. You might, um, I'll just put excite. When we talk about pleasant and positive and low arousal, we might put relaxed. You might also put the word uh, calm in here as well um, as in terms of how we uh, understand it. And then low arousal, unpleasant, would be uh, you could put sad. Uh, I think your book also, also mentions sluggish. Uh, some people might use the word chill, but chill ends up probably falling up in this quadrant more than any other uh, the uh, chilled out kind of thing. But low arousal and unpleasant, um, some might put uh, blue as another alternative. So no matter which way you cut it, um, we our emotions will run along these different dimensions. And generally, most reports, when we actually talk about uh, emotion in general, uh, will be reported along these same kind of things. So um, if you think about uh, what you feel at any given point in time, you can probably put it along these particular dimensions themselves. Now, when we, when we t talk about or turn our attention to anger uh, and how it shows itself, I think everybody has uh, a different experience with anger. Um, some people are what you might call the uh, stuffers. Uh, they feel angry a lot, and instead of displaying it, then they, they stuff it. Um, and uh, some, some researchers would suggest that uh, people that tend to stuff their anger oftentimes have a higher degree of GI uh, tract disturbances, uh, whether it's colitis, um, or um, stomach aches, if you want to put it in that category, um, ulcers, things of that sort. The other people who are uh, the exploders, if you will, that lay it out on, on to everybody, uh, fall into the category of people that would probably uh, have the uh, high blood pressure because they're so, uh, they, they kind of let it, let it blow. Um, or uh, heart issues, which we will see later on when we talk about managing stress, that uh, these same uh, propensities seem to show themselves when we talk about um, uh, just handling stress in general. Um, but one of the things that I want to turn our attention to in the next slide here is just to look at uh, the actual causes and then consequences themselves of anger itself. 